Well, welcome to another video and welcome to Spain. Specifically, a racetrack called Harama. I think that's how you say it. Just outside of Madrid. And if I turn the camera this way, you may be able to see behind me right there. There are a few Toyotas and if you've got a keen eye, you'll know that those are GT86s. However, we're not here for the Toyota GT86 today. We are here for the return of a legend. It's gonna be legendary. Now before any of that, let's have a little history lesson. A little history lesson about Toyota and more specifically sports cars made by Toyota. Toyota is most well known for making pretty usable, accessible, cheap cars and they've become a huge player in the game making their own city where they develop their cars. Toyota sports cars though, they started way back, 1965, when the 2000 GT came out. Now the 2000 GT must be one of the most iconic and beautiful, some would say, Japanese sports cars ever made. And they only ever made 351. And now there are only 13 left in Europe. They have 150 horsepower and the most recent one was sold at auction for 1.2 million dollars. And that's where the whole Toyota sports car story started. It was then continued in the late 70s when the Celica Supra was launched in 1978. Now this Supra name is going to become very relevant and it's the start of a legend. It was first linked to the Celica. So Celica Supra was a car launched featuring an inline six. However, the inline six was only available in America and in Japan. So not in Europe. And it was developed as more of a Grand Tourer car. Now after the Celica Supra, so the first Supra, the A40, we then skipped to 1981 where the Celica Supra again it's a Supra featuring the Celica name, this time called the A60 was launched. We don't talk about the A50 much because it was just a facelift. Now the A60 featured an inline six, 145 horsepower from its 2.8 litre engine and was much more sporty, much more of a sports car than a Grand Tourer. For example, it was one of the first sports cars launched with a limited slip diff, which makes for a lot of fun. Following that, the A70, which was the first ever Supra to be launched as a purely Supra car without the Celica name, was launched in 1985. Now this had 270 horsepower and was one of the best selling Supras, selling over 200,000 models. That's a lot more than the 40,000 A80s which were sold. Now that car is an icon. Now in the early 1990s, Honda had launched the NSX and that meant that Toyota needed to come out with a really exciting sports car. So they launched the A80, which we all know for being very famous from movies such as Fast and Furious, of course. Now it was an instant hit with its unique design and in its most powerful version with the turbo it could go up to 326 horsepower. But that was only a starting point because after the Fast and Furious franchise people got into tuning these cars and there are some reported to have up to 2041 horsepower, which is pretty mad. The production of this car ran all the way through to 2002 when it had to be stopped due to regulations. Now that brings us all the way to today. Specifically this, the brand new A90 Super. Now as the name suggests, this is leading on after the A80. And right now it isn't camouflaged because they don't want us to see too many details because this is a pre-production car. But it's going to be released very, very soon to have deliveries next year. Now this car, we don't have exact figures for it yet, but they're saying 300 horsepower and up. So we don't have an exact number, but we know it'll be more than 300 horsepower. And same thing goes for the newton meters of torque. Now, we also don't have any performance figures other than knowing that it's gonna be under a five second naught to 60. We do, however, know that it has the legendary inline six with a turbocharger. Now, this is Toyota continuing in the sports car market and trying to pierce a new hole in a market which we know very well. Now, the way they want to do that 
is by making this car handle beautifully. So they've gone for an extremely short wheelbase, shorter in fact than the Toyota GT86, but a very wide track. Now on top of that, they've made it super rigid. It's not using any carbon fiber, but there is plenty of aluminum. Now this car happens to be more rigid than the Lexus LFA, and you guys know that is a legendary, much more expensive car. I personally think it's obviously maybe hard for you guys to see on camera with the camera, but in real life, you can kind of get an idea of the proportions. I think it looks fantastic, especially from the back here. It's got some cool gadgets, like a Formula One styled little light there. It comes on when you're reversing, and it's very, very cool. It reminds me of the Ferraris as well. It's got these nice rims. Now, of course, most of what we see here, we're not entirely sure if it's gonna stay on the production car or not, but these rims are lovely. Now, they are hiding some Brembo calipers underneath there, so we're talking serious in terms of the brakes. It's got all over the body, though, it's got these air intakes, which are filled in. They're fake air intakes, which will only be useful on the race car, so I believe they're gonna make a GT4 class race car. I personally am not a huge fan of fake air vents and there's plenty of them around this car now we're also not going to lie to you this is also probably quite similar to what's going to be the new bmw z4 and you can kind of feel that inside the inside is completely covered up so you can't see it but i mean anything from like the key currently we don't know if that's going to stay through or the interior entirely was going to stay through but you can feel like there is a lot of bmw-ness in there now that may be a great thing for some of you but if you were expecting this to be a completely separate project it's not quite that at least from what we can see now now that being said also there's a very bmw noise i think we should show you some of that right now <laughs> sounded pretty good there right well on the move actually not to disappoint you it's not quite as impressive you don't get that many crackles and the sound is kind of uh, feels a bit muted but I am told that that's for the Euro cars and potentially in the American market they're going to unlock that and it's due to regulations and anyways it is a Supra so a lot of people are probably going to modify them and put exhausts on them regardless now you let me know in the comments down below what you think on the looks of this car I personally think it is very very cool it, you can tell it's very small um, but it's got a nice start, seeing as it's so low and short and quite wide. The interior is all covered up, so I can't show you too much of that. Um, but as I said, there are many, many BMW parts. But there is a very cool semi-digital dashboard. Now, semi-digital because uh, it's not like one of those massive screens like you have in Audis and stuff. It is pretty cool. Uh, you know, I would have liked to have a huge screen and kind of take all that technology aside. But it does feel like they've definitely developed this to be used on the road rather than just on the track. So it's 100% when you get inside, it feels like a comfortable car that you could use daily. It's not a stripped out race car. Maybe there'll be versions coming of that later, but they've uh, they've definitely not gone for that on this one. It's a very exciting car and the development they've put into this and probably the money they've invested in this car is huge. And with it being such a legendary name, they need to get it right. So I think it's about time we hop into the car, give it a go and see what this new Supra, the A90, is actually like to drive. Now first of all, we are around, I think you say, Chahama? I, I don't really know, I've, I've probably completely messed Harama. that up. Harama. Harama. Okay, Harama racetrack, which is extremely technical and has just been resurfaced. And we're blasting around here, currently in the Supra. Now, as I mentioned before to you in the video, we don't know exactly how much power it has. 300 horsepower, over 300 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque. Now, how does it feel? That's the most important thing. It feels really good, actually, to be honest, in a nutshell. Now, there are obviously a few things which you can definitely feel as soon as you hop in. So you can feel that the difference between normal and sport, because we've gone around in both, is actually pretty huge. The adaptive suspension, you can definitely feel the, uh, the car stiffening, stiffening up trying to concentrate as we're going around this track which I have literally just discovered but you can feel the car stiffen up you can feel the sound of the you can hear the sound of the engine a bit more um, it's still not crazy ideally I would want it to be a little bit louder uh, when it was coming past the straight you couldn't hear it that much the steering is really nice now obviously as you can tell we've got cloth all over the seat so that you can't see the interior this is still not a production car um, so we can't show the dashboard, we can't show the interior of the car, but it feels quite nice in here and it feels like this car will be usable when eventually it hits the road. The gearbox, so 8 speed, automatic, I'm on the paddles right now, feels really rather good. Um, sometimes it doesn't change down quite when you want it to, but when it actually does let you do your shifts, it is very, 
very quick and there aren't really any pops or bangs or anything exciting happening on the gear shift but they do what you need them to do which is the most important it is sometimes annoying when you're coming into the corners and you want to downshift and it won't quite let you but one thing which is cool is it won't upshift for you when you hit the red line the weight distribution as they told us in a press conference earlier it's 50-50 and you can really feel that around the corner so it's so well balanced and really quite planted through the quick stuff right now we're going over a blind left hand corner you can really feel that the car is going where you want it to go so you can put as much steering lock in as you want and the car is kind of just like there waiting like yeah I can do more so the car is extremely balanced and extremely grippy which is really really and bearing in mind also we've got the air conditioning on this isn't a stripped out race car this is a road going version of the Supra the brakes feel quite nice um, nothing particularly special they break quite hard but not shockingly so um, and quite nice feel through them the acceleration is quick not brutal won't you know sort of kick your head back but for this car and where I imagine we don't know a price yet but I imagine the price point it'll be in this is really, really competitive and it's definitely enough power for you to have a lot of fun. It feels like a driver's car. Now you can feel it is very modern. Um, so, you know, it's not as light as maybe some people are hoping it would be. It doesn't feel kind of like if you're driving one, you know, a car that's under a thousand kilos. Um, but then again, it will mean that it's very usable. So there is plenty of sort of toys to play with in here, um, which I'm sure you'll be able to enjoy. But overall, this is really good fun. Man, this track is good. See, like there, we're coming through corners quick, and it doesn't really struggle, not even any tire squealing. You can also feel that the car, despite it being planted, it wants to play. And I think we're going to be doing some of that later. But it's kind of like, it's not telling you, you know, what well, some cars you'll sort of thrash them on a track like this, and they feel like, you know, what are you doing? Like, I'm not meant to be here. What's going on? Whereas this car is kind of like, yeah, come on then. Like, let's have a good time. You can feel like the back would want to come out if you asked it to. And we are going to be doing some of that later. And I'm excited to see how it does there. Because with this weight distribution, it's going to be very, very playful. So far, no real wear in the brakes either. It's going to be fully announced, I believe, at the Paris Motor Show. Then we'll get all of the figures. Does it feel powerful enough? Yes, it does. I mean, for a car like this, which I imagine is going to be tweaked with, it doesn't feel turbocharged either. The throttle response is pretty direct. There's a tiny, tiny, you can kind of feel it a tiny bit, but nothing sort of notable, nothing like, like on the old cars. And it keeps that essence of kind of like a car that just wants to have fun and work with you to have a good time. And especially it feels like a pretty good base on which you can do some very, very exciting stuff. Um, so whether there will be future versions coming which will be more track oriented, I don't know. But this is certainly a very good base. And um, you know, it's hard to comment on competition or anything like that now until we have a specific price and we know all of the power. But it feels plenty powerful enough and the response is good and it's very playful. So the A90 Supra, very good fun. It's time to see how the Supra drifts. I'm with Frederick right here, What's who's up? gonna show us how it's done. This is gonna be quite the ride, guys. Prepare yourselves. I think we're both kids in a candy store right now. Oh, you know? yeah. New Supra, yeah. just now coming out. Yeah. I've been waiting for this car for 10 years. Yeah. And here we are, yeah. beating uh, some beating of the first the people in the world. Exactly. This is so sick. Thank you, dude. What? You'll get to try. And I'm looking forward to that. Here's that right now. Okay, so this is a GT86. Feels so light, this car. And it is. Yes. Yes. Perfect.
sick. Thank you, dude. You're the man. You're going to go fun. through all the tires today. <laughs> well, that's that, guys. From drifting a GT86 to trying out the new Supra. That was such a fun day, obviously. Thank you to Toyota for the invite. I'm very excited for the Supra. As I said, all the little pieces that I mentioned earlier, please do remember that this is a pre-production car and there are certain things they're going to try and change. The exhaust, apparently, they're going to try and work on that and the interior a tiny bit. But I really, really did enjoy the car and this track is absolutely fantastic. And most of all, thank you for watching. If you want more content like this and you want to see more reviews, more just daily videos and vlogs of someone who loves cars just like you do, please hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers, bye-bye. Hey. Let's go. Bet. Yo, once again.